G'day fans and we're back for the last time. Can you believe it? It is the season finale of good old Star Trek Discovery episode 13, which for MPS and I is actually a lucky number. How good is that? It is that hope is you part due. Oh, there's all these part ones, part twos everywhere. We've we bookended the season. It's absolutely fantastic. So uh, MPS, just very, very quickly. What did you think of that hope is you part two? Well, I thought it was just thrilling. The first 40 minutes was just sit on the edge of your seat, just couldn't. And even the second time I watched it, I just could not get past that first 40 minutes. But uh, there's so much to discuss, so we shall get straight into it. Very, very cool. So we kick off back on the planet. It's like, you know, we haven't touched the planet for a couple of episodes, you know, Pearl Saru and Adair and Culver, and they're all sitting there rotting away with the radiation burns and all the rest of it. You've got these really funky aliens sort of flying through the air. And it's clear to see that the camera crew have gone out and bought themselves some new equipment that make the camera spin around this way and spins around that way and spins around. And it's like, What's going on here? We're upside down, we're sideways, we're this way, there, that way. They're saying, oh, you press this button and it does this. Oh, let's just put that into the show. So it was completely nutso. Uh, but we got to go back to see good old Saru dealing with Sukal. And, uh, and the poor old kid's having a hard day at the office. And you sort of just want to smack him in the head and say, son, mate, you're causing all these problems. What's the deal with that? So uh, anyway, the cool thing I found is like when Adira turns up, she's gone the, the full goth. Got the fancy blue makeup and the earrings and all the rest of it. It's like jeepers creepers. Where did that come from? But uh, who, if you're wondering, whose species is called? I think it's a Zay Zahian, and there has been a few of them in Star Trek before, which is kind of cool. But it was like, oi, she's ready to hit the town in a big way. It's like it's like a nightclub of the 1970s in Germany. So uh, there you go, or the <laughs> 1980s. So MPS, what did you think of all that, mate? I got to say one thing about Saru and Doug Jones. He really fits the character of Saru. It feels weird without his makeup, but he feels more real as Saru and that the Doug Jones persona persona is more the makeup on him. So when he goes back to Saru and it is just fantastic. It just feels like he should be that he is Saru. His Saru is a, a real entity. And the Doug Jones part is just the mask that he puts on. So I thought that was absolutely fantastic. Now, you definitely can't fault any of the scenes that he appears in. He definitely makes the show shine. There's no doubt about that. Um, so as expected, there's been a few predictions that we had on this show, you know, over recent weeks. We thought, I reckon this is going to happen. And one of them absolutely came 100% true. Grey appears, right, in, 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 like in his persona. And, uh, and we thought, well, as so I ticked that box, yep, we got that one correct. But then, of course, a lot of people are asking, well, why? It's like, why is he appearing? And then, of course, if he's appearing, why don't all the other um, hosts appear as well? Why is it him specifically? And I thought, you know, sometimes, and in this episode in particular, especially later on, we get into the discovery itself. You go, you know what? Let's just put the logic and all the rest of it on hold and just accept it for what it is. And as painful as it might be, you go, as confusing as it might be, just go, you know what? Just deal with it. Gray's there. All right, we're cool. And of course, Culber I mean, sees Gray for the first time. It's like you already. It's like, oh, I recognise you. You're Gray. Give us a hug. It's like. All right, where'd that come from? <laughs> like, dude, you've never met each other. You don't even know who you, who you are. But uh, look, it worked. It was all very good for the sequence. And um, yeah, what can I say? It was uh, very, very cool. But then, of course, we zip over to Discovery itself and all hell's breaking loose. Osiris had enough. She said, fire everything. And there's like guns going off here and photon torpedoes going off there and lasers going off here. The kind of battle that we expected to see last week. And of course, now I don't know if you thought this, but I was thinking, okay, it's one ship inside the Federation, and there's all these other ships all around it, including the Voyager, which gets mentioned by name, you think they'll just blow the shit out of it and it'll be just destroyed in seconds. So um, what did you make of all that? Well, look, I think that having them inside, they were probably being a little bit nice just trying to, to disable the ship. Because if you think about it, they can disable a ship in the heartbeat. You know, they just hit the engines, hit the whatever and they disabled the ship i think they were playing a bit of yeah. let's let's hit it and and see if we can bring her back down but yeah she certainly did bring um a lot to that having all of a sudden because from last week's episode they were in talks next thing you know they're on the ship and they're all oh, guns are blazing happy, so she is she's oh, a happy camper i know and and it's funny because 
I noticed that the different lighting changes her skin tone. Yeah. And it also could be like, it almost feels like she's a mood ring, you know, yeah. when she's really happy, she's light green. When she's really not happy, she's dark green and, you know, all that sort of stuff, you know, very hulkish, if you will. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that was interesting to see that they did that until they uh, actually escaped the, the Federation's um, little hidey hole thing and then took off. I thought it was interesting. They actually mentioned the Voyager by name, and I thought it's the Voyager J. We saw that in all these episodes ago, and I thought, wouldn't it be funny if you saw it got destroyed? <laughs> you know, Discovery blows up the Voyager, and we go, all right, so where's the Voyager K coming into it? <laughs> they got one out the back, they've just got a stencil in the new, new number, the new letter, K, yeah, ting, ding, 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 ding. all right, get a crew, let's go. <laughs> um, good to see that Kovic is back, and it was very interesting that he was actually answering to Vance this time. So Vance was clearly the uh, the leader of the entire thing in this operation. So it's not like Kovic who's wearing his dark tie and his, his glasses, and we still don't know who he is even by the end of this episode. Uh, but he was answering to good old Vance, so uh, that was good to see because we were never hundred percent sure of what the power struggle was between those two. Uh, but we got that sort of pretty much verified now, which was uh, kind of cool. Uh, now, did you notice as well as I did, our, our beloved robots that just seem to be popping up everywhere, they appeared in this episode as well, but they were getting destroyed left, right and centre. It was like, those damn dots, they're all over the place. So uh, what would you think of all that? Look, I think the the battle scene on the outside of the ship and then the battle scene on the inside of the ship were very well done Yeah. in terms of, yeah, these dots, they seem to be millions of the damn things. And I'm a bit confused as to whether or not that the... The, the computer systems inside all of them or just inside the three that we saw. So, because you see the three and then you think, are they the only three helping or is it sort of, is it like when you download and upload stuff, you know, there are bits and pieces everywhere that you sort of pluck from. So that was a bit confusing from my, my side of things. When you go to have, um, you know, I'm calling them Tilly's commandos. You know, remember the scene last week where they all come out guns blazing, all the different angles, and then they're shooting people and doing this and doing that and getting through the place. That was fairly good. They sort of worked as a coherent team. Uh, but then to see that uh, Osira had um, book in the chair, ready to punish, the scientist is now really not happy and doubting what Osira's actual intentions are, and, and she tells him what's what by choking him out, basically. Um and then all of a sudden, the two guards that are holding Michael, she goes, let go of me. And they just do. It's like, well, hang on a second. That's a bit sort of pointless. Um, so, yeah, I thought that was all good. And the, the shootout between Michael and Book to get out of that hospital bed area, which puts up the thing. It was certainly interesting the way that they did that now the thing with Pearl Booker being tormented the way he was is like oh he's having a hard day at the office after seeing the agonizers or from the mirror universe like oh you put the thing around your head kind of doesn't really cut the mustard but putting up the shield uh that actually made a lot of sense because in the medical bays we know this from like other Star Trek series they do actually have like force fields for, for contamination purposes and I think that actually worked out uh uh, quite well so yeah you've got all these people doing all these heroic things all at exactly the same time so there's a fair bit going on to try and keep on on top of and while this is happening osiris is just cracking the shits big time because like nothing's working um but yeah the scientist guy uh that was interesting so and I mean, as we discover later on uh when osiris has a chat to him uh and saying i picked you out and for a purpose and I thought, well, hang on, you're sort of changing the perspective here. From last week, it seemed like Asara had a soft side, found this like um, kid who had been um, you know, was like, had a disability, raised him up and turned him into a scientist and let him do his thing. Now she's saying, oh, no, I picked you out and I, I deliberately made you bad, made you this way for my purposes. And I think that was probably a change that didn't need to be there. It could have still had a bit more of a softer side of her and her connection to him rather than just saying, well, you know, I chose you for this role rather than saying I actually had a sympathetic side to you. So I wasn't exactly a big fan of that, that change in character from Osiris' side. Um, another one of the predictions from last week. Uh, now we saw Michael put in a phone call to the mother. And uh, one of the things that we said is like, oh, well, okay, does that mean on the planet Navarre, the Romulans and the Vulcans are all going to turn up? And they did. How about that? Vance said, oh, these dudes have all arrived. We thought, how good is this? It's going to be one big ass uh, space battle. We've got the Viridian, Discovery, and all the Navarian ships. And nothing happened. <laughs> it's like, what was the point of that? It's like, didn't mean anything. So uh, very, very disappointing. But uh, mm. there you go. It was interesting, though, that that Michael could talk to Vance, you know, through the, when they were talking. And she said, oh, look, 
she said to us, sorry, let me talk to him and let me deal with this sort of thing. And Vance goes, well, whatever. You know, it was sort of like, I think, and we find out towards the end of the episode that he sort of now sees that what her methods are, yeah. although completely not Federation-like, do actually work. Um, which, if you look at Star Trek over the, the the eons, it it is the same thing. You know, we've got all these rules that we don't do and do and don't and whatever, but we'll break them all and, and fix everything anyway. So it just sort of follows Star Trek law. Yeah. Yeah, and Michael, as always, will save the day once again. Yep, I'm out there, I'm the hero, I'm going to do it. And I'm sure that worked for some people and uh, was very groanable uh, for others, So, uh, but there you go. Um, so we're zigzagging between what's going on in Discovery and back at the planet, right? And so meanwhile, back on the planet, we're having the huge <laughs> exposition as to the fact that, yep, Sukal was the one who created all the, the problems with the the, the burn? Or, 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 like they're explaining the characters are explaining this to each other, and like where the audience will go. Yeah, we figured that out ages ago. It's like, guys, oh, get with the times. You know, got to watch a few episodes. You know, that tells you everything. But I love. <laughs> I got a, I had a good laugh when this happened, when they actually explained. You know, Cole was saying, "Oh, dude, did you twig out that Sakal? He's a. I got to write this down. A polyploid. I go." What the bloody hell is a polyploid? What is a freaking bullshit name as that? It's like he's connected to the Dilithium man, so when he cracks his shits, all this stuff goes on. I was thinking, that is complete Trek, no bullshit. <laughs> really? Yeah, look. So, um, in terms, yeah, he's in genetically terms of- connected to it and all the rest of it. I reckon the writers were sitting there scratching their heads going, yeah, how are we going to make this work? So um, I must admit that was one point of the show. I thought, oh, that, that's just the classic line. So if um, if kids, if you're ever out there and you're getting picked on by uh, other kids, just go, hey, don't mess with me, man. I'm a polyploid. <laughs> well, look, it's just another made-up Star Trek term like dilithium because, you know, we don't really have dilithium in the universe that I'm aware of. Yep. Uh, so things like that have, have been made up. And, look, when you when you break down words, poly does mean many in yep. Latin. So a ploid, whatever that is, he's got many of them. No. Um, so just quickly, I thought for this episode to really work, someone had to cark it, right? I mean, we've got all these characters. They're everywhere. Someone has to, not just the bad guys, because we know they're going to die, but someone of the good guys has got to die, right? So as we see from Tilly's heroes, as it were, they're all running out of oxygen. You know, they're all struggling to get to the nacelles to sort of blow them up and whatever. And we've got one person, oh, oh I think it's how you pronounce her name, um, ops to sort of go up there. And I thought someone has to cark it um and you know you get really really close to actually having that occurring and i thought the producers of the show would have said you know what it would be awesome to lose someone but the problem is if you do that you got then got to have a funeral service for them right and there's no time in the episode to do that so just let's have the robot save the day and pull her out of the the area and it's all well and good but i thought that was one of the weakest part of the show so they got so close to it you know they run out of air someone's got to drop off the perch and you know, die the hero and all this sort of thing. And that kind of didn't happen. And I thought that was kind of a bit of a, a missed opportunity to put a bit of extra depth in, uh, uh, into the show. A lot of people assumed the book was going to die you know, we, uh, weeks ago. They thought, oh, he's, he's definitely earmarked to go. But no, he survived, okay. Uh, and then now that takes us into the whole, what some fans have called the fun house, the interior of the Discovery's bloody mm. thing, right? Now, I actually kind of lost track a little bit. And I thought, hang on, where are we? I mean, we're inside this enormous place, you know, with the, the elevators moving across the, the chasms. And I thought, are we still on the ship? I thought, have I missed something? And if there's a criticism for this episode, that's the one that a lot of fans are picking up on. They're going, the whole thing's turned into a TARDIS. I mean, there's enormous spaces in this ship. It's like, what is the point of that? What's the deal with that? Sure, it made for a great scene. It was a lot of action, yada, 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 yada. But that was stretched the bounds of credibility big time uh, to the point of absurdity. And I actually had to think, are we still on the ship? Have we gone somewhere else? Because I thought, I'm sure I must have missed something. What do you think of all that? In terms of the, the turbo lifts going everywhere, that was too big. That was absolutely insane. The technology they're using is way too advanced, even for the 31st century, I think, in terms of there were things opening so they could run through them and, and like little windows to sort of go. And the one that Michael jumped on actually was going down and then turned direction. So... In terms of the turbo lift sequence, that was just, it was way too big. Like it should have been smaller and there should have been other ways that it worked. Now, obviously, Star Trek is what, two, the, the, the ship was 200 years in our future. We don't have anything close to that in terms of what would make anything vaguely familiar to that sort of scene. So that was just a little bit out there. Like, a, all right, let's say a lot out there because it was just too hard to sort of, 
grasp that that tech was actually possible. Yeah, exactly right. Because otherwise, that's a lot of wasted space that you could be doing something with. So, yeah, it's the one biggest complaint that a lot of people have had about this particular episode. But, you know, it is what it is. It made for a great scene. We sort of just move on and, and hopefully they don't make a thing of um, doing this on a regular basis. But anyway, um, so they, we eventually end up in like it's the data center, I think it is, which looked like mother from alien if you it's like okay with this big data center in a starship okay this is all new and very very cool and the big like we've lost zara already he's already cocked he's been kicked off the elevator uh and asara turns up for the big dukaroo with a uh, good old uh michael and uh, they got a big punch up and all the rest of it i found it interesting that they just kills her it's like gone you know no last oh, i will get you next time type thing and it was all over red rover just like that and uh um that gave the opportunity for michael to save the day as we fully expected and um, before you knew it, it was all, um, yeah, happy days for everybody. So how'd you find a lamp? That was fairly interesting uh, in terms of, you know, you, you thought it seems that people seem to now know where the character is going to go. So Osiris mm-hmm. seems to go straight there, you know, all hell breaks loose and she goes, I'm just going to go there because that's where someone's going to go. But it's like, oh, hang on a second. You're not sure of that. What if she went there and, and Michael did it from somewhere else? So but it was nice and clean and, and all that sort of stuff. The one thing I didn't understand was at one point they're firing the guns at each other, almost right on top yeah, of each other. They but they go around. this way. Mm. They don't go that way. They go this way and slide next to each other. That, that was a bit confusing as well. So I did love, the one bit I did love is Michael gets pushed into the the, the computer I, bank yeah. thing. Yeah. And then she comes out, she, like she shoots through it, which, okay, fair enough. That could work. Um, but when she comes out, she coughs up. The, the data stuff and I thought that was awesome and it's like you know you've had a bit too much blue slurpy and it's gone solid and out it comes so but yeah I found it interesting that there was no last words from Asira and she was just done and gone it was like you know what that's probably a fitting end for her yeah, it's prob- it prompted a lot of questions as to what happens to Emerald Chain now. I mean, like they're still around, you know, so they lost their leader, but it's not like the whole thing just disappears overnight. But, you know, save that for another uh, another season, I guess. Um, so we're, okay, so we've saved the day. It's all good. But, hey, we've got to get to this planet really, really quickly. Uh, we're stuck inside the Viridian. What happens now? Now, I didn't even twig that the warp core was still in Discovery. I thought they'd ditch that a long time ago. Now they've got uh, the, the spore drive, you know, it's like, you know, why would you keep the anti- antiquated stuff around when you've got the really, really cool new stuff? Um, and they're thinking, how are we going to get the spore drive to work? Oh, look, Booker, dude, apparently you've got some polyploid crap going on with you and you can use it. How good's that? Which now then implies that other people can definitely use the spore drive. And good old Booker, for the first time in his life, so he stubs his hands in the dishwashing liquid and doink, how good is that? <laughs> Problem solved and got all stamets. Son, you're out of a job, sir. <laughs> well, it's only about? because he's it's only he's because he's an empath, and because remember from the beginning he was an empath with all the animals. Yeah. Yep. So you know, and the spore drive is technically an organic species. So does that mean that Dr. Doolittle, if he existed, he could use the spore drive? Because he was probably animal. anyway, continue. But he would he wouldn't do as much because as his name suggests, he he only does a little. Very good. Um <laughs> but because it's because it's organic, my uh, book can actually probably get in there. Now, the fact that he was struggling at the beginning and then all of a sudden, you know, it took three or four attempts of let's go for him to actually do it. So it was, that was decent. I did love the explosion that occurred on the Viridian with the warp yeah. core. Yeah. You know, it sort of, it went in and then it sort of went out and then it went in and then it went yeah. kaboom. Yeah. You know, there was an earth shutter in kaboom. Indeed it was. So, uh, that was awesome. Um, yeah, absolutely correct. And I guess uh, regarding um, the spore drive, it was kind of lucky that in the end they did take the thing out of Stamets's arm and they produced the, the dishwashing liquid solution. So uh, Booker could actually just stick his hands in and away he goes. Meanwhile, back on the planet. Um, so <laughs> the funny thing is we discover that good old Sukal eventually, yep, once he, he lost his mother, he went a complete nutso and that's what caused the burn. Okay. As we said, we kind of figured that out ages ago. It's like, yeah, you could put two and two together pretty quickly, but the whole sequence was the way it was done was uh, really, really cool. Uh, and the fact that um, uh, Saru was trying to talk to him on his level to say, look, you've got to go into this room, get past this alien thing, switch off the hologram. Now I don't know about you. And we've seen this before in other shows that when you see the handprint on the, on the thing, and he's got to put his hand in there to sort of like stop the reactor. That's straight out of Total Recall. <laughs> it's like, a, it's like yeah, yeah, it's like, yeah, start the reactor. Put his hands on there and the whole hologram thing stops. And um, I think that actually uh, worked out uh, 
uh, very, very well. And of course, once that had occurred, everybody reverted back to their normal selves. And of course, um, Sue Carl got to see Saru as he really, really was. So how'd your final end? I thought that moment <clears throat> when Sukal sees Saru in his natural form and the look on his face was just brilliant. It was such a touching moment. You know, he comes up and then touches his face to make sure he's real. It was just, yeah. it was one of those magical moments. And Trek doesn't have a lot of those in general. And I thought that was utterly beautiful to watch as they sort of did that. The fact that these other two are standing in the background saying nothing and all that sort of stuff. It's just typical soap opera sort of, mm. sort of thing. But it was just a beautiful moment between those two because it, it brought them together even more so you know um saru was trying to convince him the whole episode you know i'm just like you um you know I, let's create this dish that's your dish than my dish and and it just ended that very very nicely yeah totally agree uh and then the discovery just happens to fly on by and pick them all up and i thought hang and i thought <laughs> didn't there a few episodes that discovery couldn't actually fly in at all didn't they have all these issues because of the radiation and all the rest of it but uh no, don't worry about that that's only uh, that's a plot problem we'll worry about that next time shall we just flying <laughs> pick everybody up and the world is good so that then brings us to effectively the end of the episode right so we've got to wrap all these things up so everybody's reappearing so nielsen reappears as i said you know she was missing from all these episodes she's now back on the scene and some people think that maybe the actress wasn't available for the uh all these episodes which is a real shame because she is a part of the crew and uh, and as we suggested may have been a person who could have been the next first officer uh reno reappears and she's fixing one of the dots so the poor old dots who were getting their asses kicked from here to christmas <laughs> are now getting repaired as to why it even bother is another question but you know it is what it is um and uh we even get to see from the very first episode the old i think it's Cy, uh, the federation dude who just got forgotten about way back when he gets brought back into the fold it's like mate it's like the reunion of the family reunion at the end of the season <laughs> how good was that this dude gets a new uniform and everything and um and speaking of the new uniforms finally everybody's decked out in the grays and the new grays with a colored thing coming down the front uh yeah very very groovy and clearly they deliberately saved that for the end of the season to make everybody one big harmonious um kind of group but michael and stamets yeah, they're still not talking, you know. Stamets is keeping his distance from her, which I thought was actually quite good. So that'll obviously carry over into the future. So it's final lap. Yeah, look, the the wrap-up of everything was nice and tidy. It all had a pretty bow. It was boxed beautifully. Um, the fact that everyone survived, well, that annoys me the most because, you know, you can't just keep having these people continue on because there's no – it's like, oh, yeah, well, as a, as a fan, you watch it, you go, yeah, they're all going to survive. Nothing's going to happen. She had a lost a leg or hang on, an arm. Who or, hang on, which character are we talking about? Um, oh, well. Yeah, something should have happened to her, yeah. you know, or even one of the other guys should have had some sort of issue or something, you know. Everyone's walking away, you know, scratch-free sort of thing. So that really didn't make uh, a great lot of sense, you know. There's got to be some sort of loss somewhere. Um, the fact that Tilly gave Michael the command at the end when they're still trying to get back and she goes... Um, well, look, you know, if it makes it any any better, I order you to get us out of here. Um, and the, the chat between Michael and the Admiral, mm. I thought was nice. The fact that he now mentions that he had a daughter and a, mm. and a wife and they've moved um, was, was another sort of not quite touching moment, but it brought him back down to a real human rather than just being this tough guy that's always, you know, you do this, you do that, you're out, you're in sort of thing. So... Um, yeah, that was interesting. Uh, a lot of fans had been saying, oh, they all thought that Michael would be captain again. But what happened to good old Saru? How would they get rid of him? Because, you know, all things are being equal. He was actually a damn good captain. And now we know what's happened. He's effectively taken time off to go be with Sakal back on um, Kaminar, which is all lit up like a Christmas tree now, all well and truly developed with big cities and all the rest of it looking very, very cool. And uh, that's just nicely shuffled him off the do out the way. And Michael's just wandered straight on in as the boss. And you're right, Stamets would not be happy. He'd be like... Um, yeah, my captain uh, can't stand it. <laughs> yeah, not good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Anything else that you wanted to add in? Before? We actually have to rate the episode at some point too, but uh, are there any I other know. points that you wanted to bring up before we do that? The fact that they fractured the chain. Yeah. So the chain is now fractured, and that was good, which meant everyone can come in. So that now will start forming the new federation, I'm guessing. Um, the groan moment of the series was Michael's new um, catchphrase, let's fly. Fly. Oh my! All right, but it's it like, worked there because Saru at the start was trying to work out his catchphrase and he couldn't get it. 
And yeah. I think a few people thought, you're right, it was a grown moment, but you kind of go, oh, you know what, you got you got to let her have it. Yeah, she's had to, had to sit and think about it. It's like, I can't use engage, I can't use, you know, this, I can't use that. Yeah, let's go with that, let's fly. So yeah. it's like, yeah, it's a, bit, it's a bit wussy, but, you know, whatever. <laughs> but it works. Yeah, it does. Um, look, it, it tidied everything up. I like the new uniforms. I think they're going to get a bit of a, a beating over the next season. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what actually happens with some of those characters. Um, it all tidied up very nicely in the end. And look, because no one died and the robots are all good and we got to see everyone just briefly for that one frame, even though most of it was unnecessary, um, it just parceled up everything beautifully. And I got to say, look, if it wasn't for those couple of little things, I would have given this a five, but I'm going to give it a 4.5 this week. So my highest rating, I think, because the episode deserved it. However, those couple of little things could have made it five out of five. I got to say, I totally agree with you on this one as well. I mean, they chucked in everything on this episode is like they've said the budget is out the window put in everyone everything make it all happen we want starship fights we want deck fights we want laser beams we want everything we want punch-ons the whole bit right do what must be done to make this the absolute winner and uh it's the kind of thing you look if you look at this episode you go it has to be the end of the season there's no way in the world they could have done this like any time out uh, throughout the season is it a season itself so I personally, my biggest beef was the cavernous openings with the side of discovery, as we discussed, you know, the whole, the fun house as they're now calling it, that was that stretch credibility to the point of breaking. But I thought for what they were trying to do in the sequence, I'll let this one slide. Normally I'd be very, very critical of it and go, no, you've just made a complete meal of that. But it's like, you know what, let's for this one, this one episode, you know, give them like the day off and go, all right, fine. We'll just deal with it and accept it. And for that reason, uh, I thought, all right, I'll let, uh, I'll let it go. Um, a lot of it was clearly rushed. There's a whole lot that was missing. I mean, at the end, they're trying to wrap things up. You see Michael's mother very quickly. Don't even get to speak to her, right? Uh, we don't even get to see the cat. We get reference. Grudge gets referenced in the in the show, but we don't get to see Grudge. It would be good to see that. And as you said, yeah, we end up all these very, very quick shots of all these people just to say, here we are, and it's all well and good. So it did feel a bit rushed towards the end. But there was a lot of good action scenes, a lot of good character moments. It wrapped everything up quite nicely. And some people have even said, it's more like a season, I'm sorry, a series finale than a season finale. The whole show, I mean, I actually thought, oh, is the show going to finish now? Is that it? It's all done and dusted. But uh, as you mentioned, there is a season four. And some people think that this is now leading into uh, a, a brand new start. It's almost like a reboot, if you will, of the show next uh, season. They don't have the tags of the, the past, as it were for them to worry about. So with all that in mind, I originally also had this at 4.5 because I thought there were those bits that really, really irked me. But, you know, all things being equal, I sort of reassessed. I thought, no, well, actually, I will give it the five because they did go the full hog. They chucked in as everything they could uh, within the time frame that they had. And uh, with the um, uh, the aforementioned bits that I wasn't happy with, I thought, you know what, for this instance, I'll let it slide because they put so much effort into everything else, uh, which was kind of cool. The interesting thing now, though, is that some people think the show should now be called Star Truck because it's a courier service. Okay, kids, here's your dilithium. Run off and deliver it to all these places. You've got all these planets you've got to visit, all these cultures. Off you go, son. So you can just say they're, instead of they've got the grey uniforms they put on the FedEx vests over the top and go, yep, we're off to go and deliver some dilithium. <laughs> <laughs> um, I also found, found interesting that like, no, there was no foes, uh, there's no adversaries uh, introduced at all, so not even a hint of one. You thought, you know, usually a post credit sequence, you'd have a bad dude popping up and go, oh, I'm going to get these guys. But that didn't actually occur at all. So, uh, But anyway, look, the season's all wrapped up, 13 episodes, absolutely fantastic. Any final, final words on the show uh, before we ourselves wrap ourselves up? I thought it was a beautiful end over the credits that the original Trek music came yeah. in. I thought that was just absolutely beautiful. But other than that, uh, let's wait for season four. So anyway, that's the end of the season uh, and that's the end of us. So we're not too sure when we'll be back, but uh, hopefully you've enjoyed our rantings and ravings about our thoughts and views on the series uh, for this season. And uh, with a bit of luck, we'll be back and next time. So in the interim, make sure you keep on trekking Go out and mine some dilithium because the galaxy needs it. You know what? Put on a great uniform and uh, be sure to party hard. So we'll catch you sometime in the future. Okay. Bye for now.